The Grand Canyon is one of the world's most amazing natural wonders. But I bet there's a lot of mysteries that you wonder about the Grand Canyon. How old is the canyon? And what's at the bottom? What's the most dangerous animal there? Well, today, me and Mom are going to figure this out on our top 10 most cool things in the entirety of the Grand Canyon. As big as the Grand Canyon is, it's not the biggest canyon! That's right, the Grand Canyon is bigger than the state of Rhode Island, so big that you can see it from space, but it still isn't the largest canyon. Depending on how you measure, the Yarlung Sampo Grand Canyon in Tibet or the Kali Gandaki Gorge in Nepal take this honor. Even though it's not the biggest, the Grand Canyon's size stats are still pretty impressive. On average, it's a mile deep, 18 miles rim to rim at the widest point, and 277 miles long. There's a bigger canyon on Mars called Valles Marineris. It's so big, it could fit in the entire United States. Entire United States. That's big. Almost one third of the Earth geological history is here. Here in this place, starting from the rocks at the top, which are about 270 million years old, to the rocks in the basement at the bottom in the inner gorge, which are almost 2 billion years old. This place captures an immense amount of geologic history. Yeah, yeah. The canyon's so big, it influences the weather. Deep canyons and rough terrain strongly influence solar heating and the air circulation. The huge changes in elevation here also cause large differences in temperature and precipitation from the canyon rim at the top to the very bottom. As you go down into the canyon, temperatures go up and precipitation goes down. Temperatures increase about five and a half degrees Fahrenheit with each 1,000 feet you hike down, and rain that falls on the rim may never make it to the bottom. This means when it's 80 degrees at the south rim, it's 100 degrees down at the bottom in the Phantom Ranch. So hikers, be warned, as you travel down, you'll be hotter and drier than at the top. Let's go! We wanted to show you all the ecosystems of the Grand Canyon and all they had to offer. So we hiked it down, and back up, with only the aid of a few lollipops and my mom and dad. On the north rim, you begin your journey into the canyon in the boreal forest. If you hike down from the south rim, you begin from a ponderosa pine forest. These areas are about 7,000 to 10,000 feet above sea level, and they get the most rain out of the canyon. There's a lot of snow too, and it's here where you'll find small mammals and deer. We're here at about 5,200 feet of altitude, and that means we're in the pinyon juniper woodland ecosystem. So that's an ecosystem that exists from about 4,000 feet to about 7,000 feet. It gets about half as much rain as the ponderosa pine ecosystem that's above it. And so that means the plants here need to be very drought resistant. So you'll find things like juniper, prickly pear cactus, yeah. and other plants that are designed to tolerate low levels of water. When you get about halfway down the canyon, you reach the desert scrub ecosystem. It is the hottest and driest part of the canyon. Here you have plants and animals that are well adapted to living in these harsh conditions. The majority of reptiles in the park, you see scorpions, uh, plants like agave, and it is a harsh, dry environment that really tests the creatures and plants that live here. It's testing us, so we're gonna keep going to the next ecosystem. And here we are in the riparian zone at last, the smallest ecosystem in the Grand Canyon, but the one with the most biodiversity. We find the canyon tree frog here, we find the cottonwood trees, other lush vegetation here at Bright Angel Creek, we find fish. Today we were searching for insect larvae with rangers. These zones are amazing and wonderful and so critical, not just the species that live here, but the humans that visit because they help refresh and cool us and sustain us on our journey through the canyon as well. All those different ecosystems help make the Grand Canyon high in biodiversity, but some animals you can only find in this area and some have unique adaptations just for living here. 
endangered fish like the humpback chub, the endemic kaibab squirrel, or the Grand Canyon rattlesnake, which is pink, to blend in with its surroundings. Okay, so there are pink rattlesnakes here. Pretty cool, unless you don't know pink. <gasps> anyway, they're not the most dangerous animal. Rock squirrels are the most dangerous animal. Yes, squirrels. In this situation, size doesn't matter. Why are rock squirrels the most dangerous? Why not the elk or the bison or the snakes? They're gonna bite you. <clears throat> oh, but why do they bite? Because you don't, because they want food from you and they don't like being pet. Oh, so people feed the squirrels and then squirrels want food and then they bite people. Mm, and they not good. Naked. All right. Pink rattlesnakes, cool. Feeding animals, not cool. While the rocks here are old, as many as two billion years old, we aren't exactly sure how old the Grand Canyon is. We know it's old, but the question is, how old is it and when did it form? Scientists still aren't exactly certain how it formed, and there's even some debate as to its age. Now, while the rock at the canyon has been around for nearly half the time that our planet has existed, the canyon itself is likely a more recent addition to the geologic landscape. But the question is, how recent? Well, scientists argue about that too, with hypotheses ranging from 70 million years to 6 million years. Recent research suggests that maybe both answers are actually a little bit correct, and possibly the Grand Canyon formed about 5 to 6 million years ago after a series of smaller canyons that were older, maybe as old as 70 million years, linked up. You want to know how the Grand Canyon was formed? Down, up, down, and out. Down, up, down, and out. Down, up down and out, down, up, down, and out. Well, the first step is down, right? Because the, all the igneous and metamorphic went down to form up. That's right, and that happened how many years ago? 2.8 billion. Yeah, like two billion years ago, that rock formed the basement foundation and all the sedimentary layers layer on top of that like a layer cake. Up! 70 million years ago, plate tectonics were lifting the Grand Canyon up. But then the Colorado River cut it down, so it's a canyon. That's why the Grand Canyon is a canyon, and it's deep, and it has pretty old history. Let's go. So the down and out portions of our catchy little tune all have to do with the Colorado River. And if you look at it, you can see why. So the Colorado River was responsible for down cutting that formed the canyon. And it did that for several reasons. It was powerful enough to be able to do that because it runs fast, it runs through an arid climate, and it has a steep slope. So that allowed that down cutting action to occur, and then you see how muddy it is. It carries all that sediment out. So that down and out action is the last two parts of our song that formed this Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon's the ancestral home of 11 associated tribes. We're here today in what's currently called the Indian Garden Campground, but we heard this interesting story tonight from the park ranger about how it's likely to be renamed very soon to Havasupai Gardens. And the reason for that is that there were members of the Havasupai tribe living here in the 1920s when the National Park Service came in forcibly remove them in order to turn this into the campground that we see today. Havasupai advocates have pushed to rename this place in honor of its ancestral habitant. This will now be called Havasupai Gardens. And that's acknowledging the deep connection that these Native American tribes have to this land. This is their land. They were the first caretakers of it and the entrepreneurs and prospectors and tourists that come today to marvel in what is the Grand Canyon, uh, all are following in their footsteps and are, are on their land. And so it's important to remember that this special place is special not to just us as tourists, but to others as their ancestral home. Canyon. Yep, that's true. The rocks of the canyon are older than the oldest known dinosaurs. 
about the time that the dinosaurs roamed the Earth, about 80 million years ago when they were in their heyday, this region was covered by the Western Interior Seaway. The river and canyon didn't even exist as we know them now. But there are still lots of fossils you can find here. Ancient marine environments created many of these sedimentary rock layers in the canyon over the past 525 million years. So marine fossils like trilobites, coral, and brachiopods are pretty common here. The oldest known fossils of the Grand Canyon are about 1.2 billion years old, and these are stromatolites. Stromatolites are sort of living rocks, bacteria that accumulate in layers of mud and sand that were very common in the early days of Earth, and while rare, can still be found on Earth today. They are the earliest fossilized form of life we have ever found on our planet, and they may have been responsible for generating the oxygen necessary to support life as we know it. The Grand Canyon. Well, that's it for us. We hope you've enjoyed this top 10 list of the most amazing things to know about the Grand Canyon. We'll see you next time out on the trail. We still didn't lose our jam. What's our jam? Down and out. Down, up, down and out. Part two.